In a world where ships are forged with digital dreams and modular marvels, this giant of the seas is rewriting the rulebook on naval construction. But what makes the USS Enterprise truly stand out? How is it resisting the tides of tradition and sailing towards a high-tech future? Join us as we explore the digital dance of steel and circuits, the secrets behind its streamlined construction, and the fascinating journey of turning recycled steel into a maritime masterpiece. An aircraft carrier is like a warship that's basically a floating airbase. It's got a super long flight deck where planes can take off and land, and it's packed with all the bells and whistles needed to carry, arm, deploy, and bring back aircraft. Why is it such a big deal, you ask? Well, this bad boy becomes the star of the naval show because it lets a whole fleet of ships project air power globally. No need to rely on local bases, they're like the heroes of the sea swooping in anywhere, anytime. Now, let's talk evolution. From humble beginnings in the early 1900s as wooden vessels launching balloons, these carriers have transformed into nuclear-powered beasts. They're like floating airports, hosting all sorts of aircraft, fighters, strike planes, helicopters, you name it. And here's a fact. While they've launched heavy-duty planes like gunships and bombers, those machines don't actually land on the carrier. It's a one-way ticket for them, so why is the aircraft carrier the most impressive of modern fleets? Well, it's got the whole package. Diplomacy, tactics, mobility, autonomy, you name it. And get this, by cruising in international waters, it avoids all the problems of dealing with territorial issues. No need for permission slips from other countries, just plain smooth sailing. Now, the USS Enterprise CVN-80 is the third aircraft carrier of its kind, part of the Gerald R. Ford class family. The U.S. Navy is cooking up a fleet of these incredible carriers, and they're not just building one or two. They're going all out for 10 of these marvelous machines. The plan is to swap them out one by one with the current carriers. First in line is the lead ship, the Gerald R. Ford, or the CVN-78, taking the reins from the legendary Enterprise, CVN-65, and later, the Nimitz-class carriers. Now, what makes these carriers so special? Well, they've got a hull that's a bit like the Nimitz-class, but here's the cool part. They're packing some serious futuristic tech. We're talking about the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, AKA EMALS, a game changer in the world of carrier takeoffs. And that's not all. There are other useful design features aimed at boosting efficiency and cutting down on operating costs, like sailing with smaller crews. It's all about working smarter, not harder. Now, the name of the game here is Honoring the Greats, and that's why this class of carriers is named after former U.S. President Gerald R. Ford. Fast forward to 2008. That's when the first of these giants, CVN-78, was officially brought into the world. Commissioned into service on July 22, 2017, it's been making waves ever since. And guess what? The second star of the show, John F. Kennedy, CVN-79, is getting ready to hit the seas in 2025. Now, don't let the numbers confuse you. The CVN-80, the ninth in the history of the U.S. Navy to carry the name Enterprise, is gearing up to set sail and dominate the oceans by 2028. Back in August 2017, they kicked off the construction with a bang, a steel-cutting ceremony that marked the start of something massive. And it's not just any ship, but the first American supercarrier in ages that isn't named after a person. It's breaking the tradition and standing out from the crowd. Now. Let me take you back to December 1st, 2012. The Secretary of the Navy, Ray Mabus, made a big announcement during the inactivation ceremony for the USS Enterprise, or the CVN-65. He declared that the upcoming powerhouse would be none other than CVN-80, proudly inheriting the legendary name Enterprise. But wait, there's more. Fast forward to December 2016, and guess who gets the honor of sponsoring this behemoth? None other than Olympic champions Katie Ledecky and Simone Biles. All right, let's take a closer look at CVN-80, the aircraft carrier that's not only modernizing the skies, but also changing the game in how it's being built. Try to imagine this colossal marvel coming together in Newport News, Virginia. Thanks to the talented people at Huntington Ingalls Industries and Newport News Shipbuilding. Now here's the twist. CVN-80 is making history as the first ever aircraft carrier that's completely designed and built using digital platforms. So then, What's the secret behind this maritime marvel? 
Well, it's a fusion of modular construction and digital engineering that's not only trimming costs but also turbocharging the construction process. According to Lucas Hicks, Vice President of New Construction Aircraft Carriers at Huntington Ingalls, industries, the masterminds behind this creation, the technologies involved, are expected to mirror those of the first two Ford class carriers. They're also incorporating lessons learned from the USS Ford and USS Kennedy, making improvements and adjustments along the way. Remarkably, the DBR has no moving parts, reducing maintenance and manning requirements. It incorporates a central controller, a novel aspect, and is powered by the Common Array Power System, or CAPS, while being cooled by the Common Array Cooling System. The USS Enterprise CVN-80 is assured to make history as the very first aircraft carrier to be entirely brought to life using digital drawings and procedures, leaving behind the age-old paperwork packages. Now imagine a world where shipbuilders trade traditional paperwork for sleek digital tools, making their work not only more efficient but also user-friendly and intuitive. According to Hicks, the brains behind this technological marvel, the switch to digital data, is a game changer. And the progress doesn't stop there. The USS Kennedy, the second act in the Ford class saga, has been pioneering some of these construction innovations. They are using modular construction, a Newport News shipbuilder's specialty, a division of Huntington Ingalls Industries. Here, the compartments are assembled into structural masterpieces before being gracefully moved to the dock, speeding up the entire building process. Starting from the base and working its way up, the ship begins to take form. Inner bottoms and box units seamlessly connect, much like fitting together pieces of a naval jigsaw. Yet, there's more to this ingenious playbook. The USS Kennedy incorporates clever techniques such as fabricating or forging ship parts rather than casting them, an intelligent maneuver aimed at trimming costs. Now, mark your calendars. This powerhouse is set to replace USS Dwight D. Eisenhower and is gearing up for a grand launch in November 2025 with a delivery date planned for March 2028. And here's the grand plan. The USS Enterprise is part of a Navy initiative to design carriers that are both cost-effective and technologically streamlined. It's not just a ship, it's a blueprint for the future of naval construction. The fourth in line, CVN-81, is already gearing up for its turn, progressing through key planning and preparation phases. The digital revolution in shipbuilding is underway and the USS Enterprise is leading the charge into a new era of maritime excellence. If you enjoyed this journey into the world of advanced shipbuilding and cutting edge technology, don't forget to hit that like button below. And for more fascinating stories and updates on the USS Enterprise and beyond, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more thrilling adventures on the high seas.